Mingni. And today we're going to have a Prodigio chat where um, we're just going to talk about uh, you know some things that came out in our latest release, uh, version 3.20.1. Um, give you guys an update on what's going on and uh, maybe answer some questions, maybe take some questions in the chat. Um, but first off, uh, I want to uh, introduce uh, once again Prodigio. Um, I'm the chief architect. My name is Brian Wagner of Prodigio RTS. And what Prodigio RTS is, is the robotic trading system offered exclusively by Thinkorswim and TD Ameritrade. The way that you get the Prodigio trading platform is in your Thinkorswim platform. Um, you need to send an email in to support at thinkorswim.com with the subject line Prodigio Activation. And what they do, and I'm going to bring this up again. Sometimes I have luck with this and sometimes not with the buffering. Um, under your trade tab, once you have permission, you will get a Prodigio icon. Um, press that icon and that's going to launch Prodigio as a separate process. Um, any questions that you have about the platform, uh, the best resource for information about the platform is joining us here every week at 12 o'clock um, Eastern Standard Time, 11 o'clock Central. Um, in the Prodigio chat. And we also archive these videos on the website. And our website is www.prodigiorts.net. Um, on our website, uh, we have a blog. Um, we put um, you know, some notes about things that we do. And if I ever do um, a strategy, sometimes we develop strategies in these chats. Um, if we ever develop strategies, we post them out into the blogs. Um, but also, we have an FAQ. We have a, a user forum. Um, and join us here in the chat. We have a strong presence here in the chat room uh, during the trading days. And usually someone at Pretty Joe is available to answer your questions or maybe work on some strategies, etc. Uh, finally, if you have questions related to your account or Pretty Joe trading, send those questions in to Prodigio at thinkorswim.com. And as always, follow us on Twitter. We're um, twitter.com slash wizardlab. Okay, so uh, with that said, um, we had a new release uh, last week, uh, 321, and this was largely a maintenance release, um, but we have a couple other notes um, on this release as well. And I'm just going to start by just giving you a brief overview about uh, what's different about the platform. Um, the focus of this release was to kind of change some of the mechanics uh, running in the background. Uh, one of the things that we dramatically improved was the uh, connectivity the client to uh, server connectivity. So when you run Prodigio, when you launch it, um, what you should notice is that the connection um, is a lot quicker. It's a lot quicker to actually launch the platform. Um, now we had a couple um, issues uh, where people have been complaining that the uh, platform wouldn't load. Um, if that's happening to you, please send a support email in to Thinkorswim. They have a small issue with their launcher, and um, you know, are they're, they're not launching us in some cases. So they kind of have a ticket open for that. And uh, you know, just if this is happening to you, just send that in, and either uh, they can find a workaround for you, or um, you know, it'll help uh, support the cause. Um, the connectivity—that's one of the main things that we kind of worked on a lot. Um, but I have, we have the uh, release notes, and I'm going to point this out to you right here. authentication. Um, we added uh, one of the things is that uh, Prodigio has the forming bar feature. And the forming bar feature, what that forming bar feature is, um, okay, so the sound jumped a little bit. Sometimes that happens when we, uh, we switch windows. Okay, I'm um, just waiting for this buffer to clear. Okay, good, good. Um, 
let's see here. Uh, Prodigio has a feature called Forming Bar. And what that does is it runs your strategies. And once again, you know, if, if you're seeing Prodigio for the first time, this is a very, very gentle introduction. Um, usually we split these chats between introductory videos where we walk through the platform. And I'm going to talk a, a bit about some of that today. Um, others are more advanced where we talk about strategy development. Um, this is kind of like a catch everybody up to date and let you know where we're headed. That's the payoff of this chat today. Because um, we're going to we're working on some pretty cool things, and uh, I think that a lot of you guys out there are going to be really excited about the uh, the various um, quick scanners that we're building, etc. So I'm going to talk about those in about a minute here. But just to finish this list out, the Prodigio uh, Wizard Lab it has this feature called Forming Bar, and what that allows you to do is it allows you to run your scans in Wizard Lab. And in Wizard Lab it lets you run technical analysis scans using a drag and drop interface. You don't have to write scripting code and that's the advantage of using Prodigio Wizard Lab. Um, it has a feature called Forming Bar and what that allows you to do is run your scans on market data as ticks are coming in. So as this, this data is flowing into the system um, you don't have to wait for the bars to close out and if you look at any charting package, if you look at any um, technical analysis like an RSI or moving average, um, when you look at that on the chart, you're only looking at the values as they're calculated at the end of every OHLC bar or candlestick. Forming bar lets you kind of jump the gun, and as the bar is dancing around on your, on your screen and forming, it will evaluate the logic and it will possibly fire signals. Um, so with that forming bar, uh, we added a feature where backtest now supports the forming bar on dailies. Um, that actually wasn't done in the past. If you created a strategy um, based on daily bars and you had forming bar enabled, you would notice that there's no difference between forming bar enabled or disabled in backtest. Well, we actually added that into the backtest with the minimal sampling resolution. That's one minute. That's important to know. If you're running backtests in Wizard Lab, um, these back tests are currently running on one minute resolution. So you can use five second bars to build your strategies, but those are only going to fire trades in the, uh, the real time modes in trade optics or in RTS trading. So the back tests have to run on one, mi one minute resolution, but it has the forming bar function built into it now. Uh, and then there's a bunch of other notes about ver various bug fixes, and I'll go through this really fast. Um, there's been a lot of questions lately about when Prodigio will be available to TD clients. And I promise you they're working very hard to deliver that. We met with them a couple weeks ago um, over there on the other side and we had a lot of conversations about it. And they're very busy over there on the TOS TDA side. They're doing a lot of work. Um, they're bringing a lot of things together in their, their back-end systems. And what this should allow us to do is to offer um, Prodigio to the TDA Live accounts. Now this is still in its early phases. They're still doing a lot of work over there, but um, work is being done and you can kind of expect this progress to be kind of priority number one. So if you're asking about live access on your TD account, they're working very hard on it right now. It's their top priority. Uh, not just Prodigio, just you know things in general, but Prodigio is a very important part of that. Um, so you can look forward to that, and some of the work we did was, you know, in anticipation of that. Um, a couple other bug fixes, some disclaimer issue. Um, importing and exporting, there were some bugs in importing and exporting. Those issues are fixed in this version. Um, one thing that you may still experience, there was the, uh, the bug was in the last version exporting. That's where the bug was. And um, if you had exported strategies in the last version, um, they may be missing some links in this version, particularly if you use kind of nested rules where you build a rule and then you use that rule in another rule. So if you chain them together, which is a more advanced thing to do anyway, but um, those links might be missing if you import them. All you need to do is just import them right back in and you're set. But those issues are fixed now. Um, there was a couple buying power related issues and back test. Um, there was some, there's an order routing issue that possibly came up sometimes during add to position. So these are kind of like nitpicky things, but they're all listed here. Um, a couple UI uh, display issues with the symbol lists. Um, there was a couple issues with the filters in Trade Optics, not the Trade Optics themselves. Trade Optics has filters that you could apply. Um, some of those things were uh, fixed in this version. 
um, let's see, there was a quote subscription issue, very small thing, um, some display issues with client side threading, a um, couple other bugs, Wizard Lab Study Engine Reload bug was fixed, sometimes that was causing errors. Um, multiple time interval collation. This was one of the more important issues um, that was fixed in this version. Um, if you were using a lot of different time intervals, sometimes those timed events weren't collating properly. I mean, it wasn't a big deal, but it was enough to kind of be a uh, pain in the neck, and that's resolved now. Um, daily OHLC signals, sometimes those are filtered at the end of the day. We had a fix for that. Um, fixes to evening star, morning star, and doji studies, and a bunch of other optimizations. Um, so I got a question, Marcus is asking me here, um, can I be more specific about a date? Um, I would love to be, but I, I don't have that date. Um, the best thing you could probably do is uh, send a question into uh, the support team, because uh, if you send an email into prodigio at thinkorswim.com, um, they're right in the middle of everything over on the TDA side, and uh, they're um, they're really great at uh, working synergistically between all the teams and things like that. It's probably the best place you can get that, but uh, they haven't given me a firm date yet. All I know is that um, you know from our discussions, they're working very hard over there. Um, probably a little bit uh, burned out with everything that they're doing, but they're they're doing a great job over there. Um, okay, so that's the rundown of you know these features. Now, what's also very important, and I want to uh, bring this up. What's very important is that uh, we have expanded the universe of backtesting symbols. So in other words, um, if I look at uh, one minute data, what we've been able to do is we've been able to, um, to get a hold of a much larger data set for running backtests. And the data set, the date, we now actually have an official date. It goes back to 2008 for the one minute resolution. Right now, that's not the dailies. I'm going to talk about the dailies in a minute. If you use any kind of intraday interval, um, one minute data or 15 minute data, etc., if you're using intraday bars and data, those databases now go back to 2008. Those databases are splits adjusted, um, and it has the wide range of equity symbols. So it's a very clean set of data. You can run back tests, um, and there's going to be a lot more. It, it was already very big, but what we did was we went back and we made sure that going back to 2008 there were no holes in the data, um, that the data was very clean, and so we're really excited uh, to be able to offer that because a lot of these systems they kind of don't let you go back farther than six months. So we're, we're trying to uh, do better than that. So for the one minute data that'll go back to 2008. Now we also have daily data. Um, the daily data goes back to 2008, but um, we have the data and we're still in the process of kind of uploading this into our back end. The data is going to go back on dailies um, pretty much into the 20th century. So for example, we've got, um, we've got uh, daily bars on, uh, I don't know, say IBM going back to, I forget if it's the 50s or whatnot. Um, this is going to be coming up pretty soon. A uh, couple no other questions that I want to answer really quick. Um, Let's see, this is a pretty good question uh, from Bob about uh, the forming bar. Uh, can we use the forming bar to trade daily candle pattern um, at the last 15 minute of the day versus the non-forming and trade and a trade the next day? If you use forming bar, um, what this is going to do, and I'll actually, let me, let me run through this really quick because I talked a lot about it. Whenever you make a rule in Wizard Lab, I mentioned that this was kind of a drag and drop user interface. Um, it's kind of like a visual environment. You're always working left to right, and what I'm doing is I'm dragging studies out. And the way you work at this in Wizard Lab is you kind of drag outputs into inputs, and you specify what you want the rule to do. So, for example, if you want to find um, like hammers, for example, I can go down to my pattern toolbox and I can pull out bull hammers and this is just gonna it's going to run technical analysis on the OHLC dailies and it's gonna give me signals yes if it's a bull hammer or no if it's not a bull hammer I can do um, anything I want with this output I can redirect it into more logic or I can just send this into a signal 
Um, one of the things I can do is I can turn this forming bar parameter to on and that's going to fire signals for me as the bull hammer is forming. So if you want to do something uh, such as scan the market and wait until there's 15 minutes left in the day and if, if I'm a bull hammer by the end of the day I want to fire a signal. There's a real easy way that I can do that. I can turn forming bar on and what this does by default is that's going to look at it all day long um, but that's not necessarily what you want to do because at the beginning of the day the hammer you know might be forming in the in the very beginning of the day and it might be like a doji and then later on in the day when there's 15 minutes left that's when you want to make your decision uh, the way you do that really quick is I can put a time condition into my rule and you see what I'm doing is I'm dragging more logic into this rule we talked a lot about this in the last chat which is a, a very good chat about some introductory material but we have time filters and the way you would do that in Wizard Lab is you would make sure that uh, today is after, for example, if I put 1545, oops, 1545 here. This is going to fire signals if the forming daily bar is a, a bull hammer and today is after 345. Um, that's how you would do that in Wizard Lab. Um, so let's see, is that uh, 2008? Yes, yes, that's uh, 2008, um, January 1st, 2008, 7-1. Um, uh, we'll have somebody take a look at that because I don't know if that's, um, I don't know if that's this month or if it's um, on the intraday or the dailies. But I'll, yeah, we'll, I'll definitely have somebody take a look at that. Um, yet, let's see, the dates for the charts. Okay, this is a great question as well. Um, I'm probably going to talk in detail about this in about five minutes, but uh, one of the th the projects that we're working on is really um, oh, and this this actually runs into um, Tom's question as well. So we got a question uh, from I2 Mary Ann and from Tom Socalif, right? And here's the questions, right? Um, when are toss charts and Prodigio charts going to be compatible? And when are we going to have support for diagnostic uh, logging? and kind of analytical logging. And this is, these are two fantastic questions. Let me explain what I mean by this. Let's take a look at a, a chart. I look at a chart and I can do this in Wizard Lab. I can make a study where let's say I take a simple moving average and let's make this, you know, three periods or whatever. And I'm, I'm trying to just get everybody on the same page uh, for this little little idea for one of these features that's kind of coming down the pipe. So I want a second simple moving average here. right? So I've got a uh, white line, I've got a yellow line. I'm going to make that a little thicker. So the idea is in Wizard Lab it's very easy to make a strategy which finds out when these lines cross and fires the signals for either trade optics, for backtest, or RTS trading. But here's the really great question. What if I need to, um, what if I want to debug the actual values of these moving average um, bars as the signals come in? And not only that, what if I want to know things like, why didn't my signal fire today? Was it because the moving averages didn't cross over? Or was it because maybe my RSI condition was too tight and it blocked out all of the signals? So these are really great questions. Um, in addition, you know these Prodigio studies. Sometimes they're not. Um, the majority of them are the same as the TOS charts, um, but sometimes the ones you see here on the Prodigio charts sometimes they're not a hundred percent in agreement with the ones in Wizard Lab or TOS. Now Wizard Lab lines up with TOS for the most part, um, but these charts sometimes they have uh, slight subtle differences not only in terms of parameters, but also some of the calculation values. Well, these are two great questions. And the projects that we have planned to kind of address these issues is that one of these is kind of like a chart overhaul, where we're going to, it's very ambitious, um, but we are basically building in the same engine of the wizard lab uh, into the charting engine. These chart studies, they're kind of, um, 
built independently from the wizard lab studies right now. And so we have a project plan that it renders the charts uh, using instances of the same engine. We kind of have a light deployable version of the same engine that runs the same calculations, just like you would have you know, in a ThinkScript um, or something client side. We're going to be running this version of the engine to back the charts, and, and what that'll have is basically complete reconciliation between the charts that are on Chart Trader Pro and the studies as computed in Wizard Lab. In addition, that would obviously give you data export. Now, there's a couple things to be said about data export. Um, the most important thing that a lot of people care about, right, is um, data export for values so that you can make sure, you know, conditions happened or find out, you know, why conditions didn't happen, etc. So that you can inspect and debug your strategies. One of these ways would be to export from the chart. And another way would be to export from kind of a tabular format. We are working on both of these things right now. And this is actually a very good tie-in. Um, really quick, I want to diverge here. If Prodigio is not installing, send a message into Prodigio at thinkorswim.com and give them your specific information. There's a problem over on the TOS side with the installer. And uh, we really want them to kind of, you know, get this fixed as soon as possible because we know that's you know affecting a lot of you um, but please send that in so that they can you know kind of prioritize it over on their end um, you know they might not prioritize it if you know they're not getting the email so please send them in um, in the next couple of weeks what we are working on are a couple of immediate features and a lot of these features and this is why I want to uh, explain this to you guys we're motivated by um, the needs of, of a couple things uh, motivated by um, our users so you guys you know have a lot of um, things that you need you know for your trading strategies or things that you want and these are things related to say scans or risk management and we we identified a number of these issues and I'm gonna run through those list of items now um, that we're currently in the process of working on. This was a project that kind of began uh, before our last release. As our last release was in QA, we began um, a project, and I want to kind of list to you guys what the highlights are. Um, number one, the probably one of the biggest um, features that you know we have up and coming is the idea of fast scanners. Now, fast scanners, um, Wizard Lab acts as a scanner and it's very elaborate meaning you can and this is one of the big kind of pros about having wizard lab is that you can combine anything together and make your strategy as simple or as complicated as you want so let me give you a for instance here um, I remember we were working on a double top strategy and I'll just highlight this really quick let's see we have a double top and this was using say double top highs double top slopes um, this was a rule that we had built, which has a lot of logic, and there's a lot of nested logic as well. Um, let me pull this open, double top highs. And you can watch this video if you're interested in it specifically. I, I believe it's from two weeks ago. But let's open up double top highs here. I can zoom out, right? And this is my canvas where I define my logic. And, I mean, it's not the most engrossing strategy in the world, but there's a lot going on. There's quite a, quite a bit going on here. And Wizard Lab was designed so that instead of having to learn the nuances of a scripting language, you would have the flexibility of a scripting language, but be able to manage everything using a visual drag and drop user interface. And the advantage to this, the main advantage, is that it's very easy to just drop things in or take stuff out or modify it, as opposed to a scripting language where you might introduce coding errors if you go and modify someone's existing script. You can't really introduce coding errors here. Now I say coding error, you know, that's that's different than the logic of a strategy, but you can't really have a coding error in Wizard Lab. And that's that's really what's uh, you know so nice about it. But there's a lot of um, interest, and it makes a lot of sense to have these uh, ideas called quick scans. And what this is is, it's let's say I want to take a look at the stock, uh, the universe of, of stocks or equities. 
and I mean let's say I go to the market watch on trade vision the market watch on trade vision it's given you the top movers and the top decliners on the day um, with certain volume constraints for example I believe it filters out um, you know a lot of the pink sheet stocks and there's some intelligence into this scan which kind of finds um, symbols that are relevant in addition to symbols that have moved for example it kinda doesn't really um, broadcast uh, things with low volume you know a lot of these pink sheet stocks if something goes from you know one cent to two cent that's that's a hundred percent gain in you know value that's not really relevant for a good scan but this trade vision under the market watch advancers and decliners this is really a quick scan and what this does is it um, you know it runs a scan a very lightweight scan across you know the set of symbols and it checks it checks their deltas and you know what we do when we do this scan on our back end on our servers is we run this scan and we have our you know master list of symbols and it's a huge list and we run this scan on all of those symbols so your your symbol list is pretty much everything in the universe um, we run this and we find the top movers and the top decliners so this doesn't need the power of Wizard Lab. You know, Wizard Lab combines all this logic. Um, it's a little bit heavier of an operation. Well, what we plan on doing is opening up the power of a quick scan, um, you know, to everyone using Prodigio, and you'll be able to do things such as combine um, different rules, some simple rules, but things such as you know, volume, um, you know, change on the day. Um, and some very basic things, you know, greater than some predefined moving averages. In Wizard Lab, you can kind of pick any arbitrary interval for a moving average. You can you have 19 period moving averages. Um, but for a quick scan, we plan on providing things like you know 30 day moving average, 200 day moving average, etc. The things that you might find in kind of a fundamental analysis. Um, this is one of the features you know that we're working on and we think it's going to be very powerful because this will tie in directly with the symbol lists Prodigio has these symbol list editors and this is you know it's kinda of like a, a a watch list but it, well exactly like this is expanding the universe so that you can step one perform a quick scan and then step two apply that quick scan to wizard lab and that's exactly what we're trying to get at here um, so, for example, in Prodigio, you know, I can have a symbol list editor, and I can, you know, see I have this rule my list too, and I can hit the edit button, and you know, I could start adding my symbols in here. You know, I always make fun of myself here because, you know, I'm most familiar with the tech stocks. You know, take it from a software developer to be most familiar with the tech stocks. Um, but this is my symbol list that I'm defining, and this is kind of like a watch list. Um, well, what the quick scans will do is it's going to make these lists dynamic. In other words, the scans when they run, and this is still in development, they're going to run on regular intervals. And you know, this will be you know either something like every 30 seconds or every minute. I'm not sure what those parameters are going to be yet, but these scans are going to be running, and they're going to dynamically change your symbol list, just like it happens on Trade Vision. Now, this list it's gonna change throughout the day if the scans find that let's say um, LSE right now has a gain of 459 well, let's say another stock comes in with a gain of 460 and that beats out LSE well this list is going to change it's gonna change throughout the day so this concept of using a quick scan to update the list makes that a dynamic list and that's what we are um, planning on offering in Prodigio, that you can use a dynamic list and then run that list through your technical analysis. So you'll be able to do some pretty great things. You'll be able to add some volume filters, um, you know, some, some basic filters such as, you know, give me all the stocks that are above their 200-day moving average, um, and et cetera. The list really comes down to things that are supported um, with a lot of these uh, it's kind of like a hybrid between fundamentals and some technical analysis, which I'm going to uh, talk about next. Um, let's see. Hussam has a great question. I saw this come in. Um, this is a pretty cool idea. I think we actually uh, got this the other day. Um, an option in settings, right, for taking profit of the overall portfolio, just like drawdown. Um, yeah, we took that idea, and I think that's a fantastic idea. 
Uh, we're going to try to implement that because it's not difficult for us to do. Uh, but what he's talking about is, here's a feature that we want to add here. In the risk settings of Prodigio, when Prodigio's robotically trading, it has these drawdowns. And those drawdowns are designed to kind of protect the account against losses. And this is a pretty familiar concept, especially with anybody who's been using um, automated or semi-automated uh, systems um, in the past. Um, you know, these drawdowns, um, they're, they're a pretty good risk parameter to have. So uh, what Hussam is saying is that there's a reciprocal of that. And let's say you have, like, I almost want to call it a draw up, although, you know, we would probably call it something different. Um, let's say you have a, uh, now I'm just going to go with like basic numbers here, a $10,000 account. And let's say if you make 10% on the day, you want to shut down and lock in your profits. You know, you did great. You know, you made 10% on the day. So that would be, you know, $1,000 on 10%. Um, there would be additional settings here, which would allow you to capture profits in a global fashion. And what that would do is it would lock those profits in, liquidate the automatically managed trades, um, and then it would disable the robotic trading so that it wouldn't get in any more positions. So that's a really great idea. And um, yeah, we took that suggestion. That's something that um, we have it in, in the project plans to get done. So I don't know the timing of that, but you can expect to see that. Um, let's see. Questions about um, support and resistance and technicals, email alerts. Um, with the email alerts, that's something that we're talking about. Um, but I, I, have to, I have to get a firm answer on that. Um, on whether or not we're going we're gonna to support that. So at, at this moment, I'm not 100% sure. Um, technical such as support and resistance, there's ways in Wizard Lab where you can measure support and resistance. And of course, there's always the pivots. Um, but some of, let me, let me think. I'm trying to think. We have a big fundamentals build. And I'm trying to think if there's any values in there that let you get that. At the moment, I'm not 100% sure. But we can. Um, you can follow up on that in the chat room. Maybe one of you guys can answer that question um, because we do have plans on adding more studies and that might be involved in some of them. Let's see. Um, here's another question. Possible to change the time frame um, Chart Trader Pro displays. Is it possible to change the time frame Chart Trader Pro displays when you load a chart from Trade Optics? And that's, yes, that is another great question. Um, right now, when you load from Trade Optics, it's kind of uh, tied in with the five second time frame. That's actually planned for this chart integration. That chart integration that I was talking about uh, before, that actually, um, the rule, it tags the signal with the minimum resolution that the signal is, uh, is generated from. And so uh, when you hit that Trade Now button, it knows what interval that's tied to. Right now the charts, however, they're not displaying that as the interval. Um, actually, we might be able to release that without doing the whole charting build. Um, I'm taking a note here to kind of write that down and you know, perhaps you'll see that in the next release. Um, some other questions I want to get to before I talk about like the fundamental features that are coming in. Um, scan multiple markets with the same strategy. Okay, can we scan multiple markets with the same strategy at the same time? Um, right now, there's a limitation on the user interface. And let me display what I'm talking about here. Right now, we have plans on changing this interface to make it a little more simple and allow you to have more power over the control and the management of this. Right now, what you need to do when deploying a robotic strategy or a trade optic strategy is you need to select your symbol list. And these are all defaulting to the S&P 100 right now. Um, but when you select your symbol list, that's the list that the strategy will deploy against. And if you want to do more than one list right now, you have to make a copy of the strategy. Um, not so bad. It's not so bad. It's, it's easy to do. All you have to do is go into Wizard Lab. You see I picked this gap, continue gap up on big body. If I open this up, uh, gap. Right, continue gap up on big body. Um, if I hit the save as button here, 
And this is a strategy builder for those of you who are just seeing this for the first time. This is how you combine rules together in order to basically generate a strategy that's ready to scan the market. I can do something such as, you know, give it another name. I just added two at the end of this list. And that'll make it show up in here. And you see how this kind of shows up. Um, let's see here. Where, where did this show up here? Gap continue. You see how there's you know, some things that we need to work on with this, uh, with this panel because I have so many strategies in here. And did I define that as, yeah, I define this as short, that's why. Um, I can pull this up over here. Let me change that. Let me make this a buy side strategy. And let me save that. Go back into RTS. You see how this shows up at the bottom of the list here? Um, we're going to fix this panel in general. Um, really, this is just an interface in order to manage strategy deploys and undeploys. And that's really all it is. Um, so it's very lightweight in general. We're going to kind of change the way that you work with this so that it becomes a little more intuitive. But what you can do is pick a different symbol list and check it off, and that's deployed on the second list. So that's how you can do that. Um, in the refactoring of this panel, we'll make sure that you can deploy it against multiple symbol lists. A question about single OHLC and backtesting still not working. Um, yeah, we found this the other day. This is actually a, a backtest um, configuration. Um, we're, we, we flipped something and, and uh, we're testing this on the uh, pre-production servers right now. Um, I think that's going to be resolved as of tonight. Right, so if you're wondering about the single OHLC and backtesting, check this out tomorrow. I think that's going to be better. Um, here's another question. Uh, any plan to support Prodigio on Solaris? Um, I would love to, but I, I don't know if... Uh... Here's, here's my question. Can you launch TOS on Solaris? Because Prodigio is Linux compatible. Prodigio will run on Linux. Um, and if TOS has an installer that runs on Solaris. Um, Prodigio will also run on Solaris. So that's that's actually a really good question. That's It should. Yes, it definitely should. Uh, if you are it, running this on Solaris, and um, give it a try. And if uh, you have trouble, send an email into um, Prodigio at thinkorswim.com and ask them about that. Because Prodigio does run on Solaris. It's just a matter of launching. So we have to ask them about that. OK, a lot of other questions here. Um, oh, here's, here's, here's a really great one, actually. Um, how close are we are to uh, multiple setups? So we can set uh, you know, different setups for strategies, right? For example, uh, pairs and straight equity trading. Um, not in this immediate set of projects, but this is something that we're kind of leaning towards. Um, one of the things about strategy deployment is that more parameterization can be done with it. Uh, let me give you, for instance, uh, one of the things that is planned for uh, the, the project after this, this next one, and I still haven't kind of finished talking about this project that we're working on now. One of the things that we have planned for it are strategy-specific risk parameters. And what I mean by that is, let's say you have a strategy. Um, and you want two strategies to trade differently depending on different risk parameters. One's aggressive and one is more conservative. The conservative strategy, when it finds a signal setup, is a really great trading opportunity. You've confirmed momentum. Um, you've found that uh, you've found that uh, you know it's a great time to go along on this stock because all the fundamentals line up and all of the you know, the support and resistance lines up, and this is a really high probability scan, but it doesn't happen a lot, right? So this is, um, this is something where, you know, it's a conservative play. In this situation, you want to allocate more of your buying power resources to the conservative play. Now, let me take it to the other side. The other side is the more aggressive strategy. It's more of a scalping-based strategy. You're looking for very short, quick gains, on something because you're kind of scalping, say, like you know, the Bollinger Band, Bollinger Band range or something like that. One of the things that we have planned for the next project after this one is to have strategy-specific risk parameters, 
And the way you can think about this is in Wizard Lab here under the Strategy Builder, you would have um, some other dialogue that you could edit. And maybe maybe you click a button and it brings up you know, a list of risk parameters. Similar to what you have in your Prodigio risk settings, you know, some, some simple options. Those options would be tied to that strategy and you would be able to say, for the, for the more risky strategy, allocate less buying power. For the more conservative strategy, allocate more buying power. This would also tie into kind of tying strategies together. Right, so all of this stuff is involved in that. That's not in the immediate project, but that's kind of like something that we'd be working on. Um, let's see. Ability to launch. Okay, Brian, how about the ability to launch trades from Trade Optics, uh, produce scanless that utilize my rules for the management closed position section of the strategy? Um, this is something which uh, I am interested in doing, but I don't know. Uh, the logistics of it um, with terms uh, with respect to the RTS and the trade optics strategy. Um, right now there's interest in keeping the trade optics as just a, a scanning engine right? to kind of encourage the use of, of you know deploying on the RTS trading. Um, I don't know uh, whether or not you know, there's going to be business requirement to do that. Um, this is something that I'm interested in doing, and part of that that next project after this immediate one is actually um, kind of rehashing some of the things about the trade optics window. If you look at the trade optics window, um, it's really cool because you can get all the signals into like a real time queue, and I have this sorted based on time right now. As signals come in for a strategy, it'll push the queue down. Um, there's more we want to do with this and one of the things that we want to do is we want to allow you to have multiple queues and we also want to allow you to have filters so that for example um, you could have say two windows in a multi-window environment and one window is showing you all of the filtered scans from strategy A and the other is showing you all the filtered scans from strategy B. One of the things that we could possibly do is uh, show the exit signals in there as well using kind of a tree view and what would you'd see is <clears throat> you would see uh, the symbol come in and you'd have kind of like a tree view expansion where you could drop down and kind of see um, some of those things, um, some of the exit signals underneath the entry signal. So that's a really good question. Um, let's see here. Question about a 64-bit. Um, it should, this system should run under the 64-bit platform uh, that's also going to be related on TOS. If you can run, I mean, you should be able to run TOS under 64-bit and not have any problem with it. You know, the main thing about that is that this system, um, it's designed to be very server-centric. So in other words, these scans, they actually run server-side. And there's a lot of advantages to that. When you deploy these strategies, these Wizard Lab strategies into trade optics and into... Um, RTS trading, um, these strategies are going to run server side. And uh, the advantages are that when it issues signals in robotic trading, um, you have like kind of a minimal latency involved because you don't have to make that round trip through the internet. And you're already going over kind of these layer two feeds, uh, routing your orders directly to the market. So you really don't need 64 uh, bit um, processing. You know, or memory spaces in order to take advantage of Prodigio. Um, our servers are 64-bit, so when you run your scans, they are running, um, you know, kind of under the the best architectures. So that's a pretty good question. Let's see. So a lot of other questions here. Um, and if you do have specific questions about you know running the platform, send your questions into Prodigio at thinkorswim.com. Especially if you've got you know this is um, there's another question about the Sol Solaris operating system. Um, send those details in. You know make sure they get to us. Um, and you can even you know say you know CC Brian said to say, send this in in the chat. You know and that'll kind of uh, you know make make sure everybody jumps. <laughs> So let's see. So um, a lot of features uh, coming down the pipe. Um, how about being able to add an exit strategy to a manually entered position? Actually, uh, I'm glad you bring this up. Uh, let me let me get 
uh, this one out of the way really quick. Um, some people asking for the zigzag studies. Um, I believe that is on uh, the feature request list. We have a separate list for studies, and uh, we're working on that in the background. Um, but if zigzag's not available, that's going to be in uh, pretty soon. All right, I have a um, yes. Okay, I want to get back to this question. Right, let me read this question again. Um, how about being able to add an exit strategy to a manually entered position? This is something that we are working on on the next project. Let me let me give you um, the official title of this project. Right, the official title of this project, the one that's coming after, it's called Portfolio Order Entry Order Book and Reports. Now that sounds rather mundane, but what this does is it expands a lot of the things that you can do with Prodigio. And one of those things is what we call um, strategy attachment. And let me tell you what I'm, I'm talking about here. Let's say um, Prodigio is managing robotic positions. Um, those show in your portfolio view. And the way the system works is that it fires a signal, it enters into a position, and it starts trading this position. Now this, these positions, you see there's a column for strat here. This kind of says what strategy is managing the position. And if a position is opened by Perdigio, it will run the management rules against that position and it'll you know, find the opportunities to close the trade either at profit or loss. Well, one of these features that we want to add is called attachment. And over here you see I've got two trades, or three trades, Apple, Dell, and eBay that don't have any strategy running on them right now. What we want to be able to do is add functionality to this, either through buttons or right-click menus or, or anything, uh, which would allow you to attach a strategy to a manual or pre-existing position. And the way that would work is in Wizard Lab, when you build your strategy, there's different parts to the strategy. There's the scanning rule, and there's two management rules. Now, one of them is add to position, but the one I want to focus on is close position. These rules, when they trigger, will issue trading orders on the existing positions. So for example, I have some rules here. You see this gap close at prior close, gap close at end of day. You can look at these rules inside of the rule builder, um, but one of them is like a market condition, and the other is an end of day condition. When these fire signals, that's going to trade and it's going to exit 100% of the position. If you have a strategy, um, the way attachment would work is you would say right click on this position and you would say attach strategy. And what it would do is it would deploy that strategy against that position. This is something that we plan on working on in this portfolio order entry and order book and reports. Um, okay, another uh, question. Yes, we're going to expand the back test to more than six months. Um, we tightened it up to six months because um, right now sometimes uh, some people were running some really long back tests on a, a lot of symbols, and it was causing the um, it was causing um, back tests to take a really long time to run. Um, we had some discussion about this and we're going to expand this back. So here's the trade-off. We're going to increase this back to a uh, one-year time frame. It may cause your strategies, your back tests, to take longer to come back because of kind of resource contention. Now with that said, um, the live server has uh, a lot more resources than the paper money server, right? So if you're interested in running back tests, run this against your live account. That's going to give you, um, it's, it's going to be a, much better experience than running it on the paper money server. Paper money is really just kind of a demo environment. Um, make sure you're running on the live account. Um, yes, you need to launch Prodigio using TOS, so you can't launch it separately. Um, that's just uh, that, that's just the way it is. <laughs> Nothing we can really do about that. Okay, let's see here. Um, some other questions. Uh, let me answer these really quick, and then I want to finish talking about the current project that we're working on. Um, is there a way to define a rule to receive input and or send output? Um, this is a good question. What he means by this, what Marcus means by this is, I, at least I think, <laughs> um, when you build rules using the rule builder, you'll notice it's a series of inputs into outputs. Right? And here's... here's um, Oh, oh, actually, uh, 
No, yes, 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 sorry. <laughs> Let me try to open up a, a simple rule. Okay, here's an EMA crossover, right? This rule is a very simple rule and it's just saying let me know when a three period exponential moving average is crossing a 14 period exponential moving average. Um, this is as simple as they come. But what if I want to create a rule that defines a calculation? Right now all of these rules end in signals. A signal is like a true false yes no condition which fires a signal. Um, one of the things that we will be working on and this is this is actually probably after the the project portfolio order entry order book and reports um, is allowing this input to end in a value condition so in other words right now this EMA this 14 period EMA um, you can send this into any input that accepts a uh, numerical input. So for example, if I try to hover this over the cross, it'll snap in and it'll kind of lock in, but it's not allowing me to attach it to the, uh, the signal over here just yet. Um, what that means is you can't end a rule with a value. Right? So one of the things that we plan on working on is allowing you to end a rule with a numerical value and then use that in another rule. So for example, you could define a calculation and reuse that in another my rule. Um, that's it's one of the things on our future project list. Um, but maybe to answer some of these other questions. Yeah, let me let me answer um, let me r finish running through this really quick. The current project that we're working on has to do not only with those quick scanners, but also integrating a couple things into the system. For example, fundamental data. Um, we have been working um, over the past couple weeks on fully fleshing out uh, fundamental data as available to Prodigio and Wizard Lab. What this will allow you to do is it'll allow you to use, and these will be defined as studies, and there's probably, because there's so many, there'll probably be a separate section called fundamentals. It will allow you to use the fundamentals of the securities in your scans and or trading conditions. For example, um, things such as uh, earnings per share or PE ratios, um, different parameters such as market cap, um, and there will be some out of the box ones such as 200 period uh, moving averages, um, things like that. All of these things related to fundamentals um, will be available and they'll be available in Wizard Lab um, and the goal is ultimately to mark these on the charts but most importantly these will be available for scans in Wizard Lab. Next is portfolio relative rules. Right? So this is item C. I actually have a list in front of me. <laughs> um, a portfolio relative rule is something I've been talking about for a long time and we're finally uh, you know, working on this in this project. What this will allow you to do is in rules it will let you use parameters of your portfolio um, in order to have branching logic. So for example, if you want to make a decision, uh, a signal based decision based on how many active positions the account is trading uh, or kind of the uh, open P&L, etc. Um, these portfolio relative rules are going to be available and this is, we're working on a very big project right now. Um, that's one of the things that we're working on. Next comes these dynamic lists that I was talking about before. Those will be linked to the quick scans. The quick scans will be hooked up to these dynamic lists and what you'll see is available in the symbol list um, editors is you will have these lists which will be named according to um, you know whatever the dynamic scan is scanning for and you'll be able to use those in the drop downs. So for example if I go to the RTS strategies any of these dynamic lists will be available in the symbol list for strategy deployment. Um, when is the attached rule going to be made available? Um, I don't have an exact timing on that right now. Um, I do know that uh, this project that we have um, going right now, it's, it's a, a bigger one. Um, I'm not exactly sure when the next release date. I don't have dates for you guys, and I, I apologize for that. Um, but maybe we'll kind of you know, try to get a, a schedule posted online to give you guys dates for some of these things. Um, but finishing this list, let's see, expanding trade optics. Um, this involves what I was kind of talking about before, where we're going to 
add more features to this and we're probably going to make the window clonable so that you can have multiple trade optics. Uh, repairing these panels right, so that you can manage these more easily. This kind of addresses some of your questions that you had before. Um, we're going to be cleaning up the RTS strategies and the trade optics panels. Um, there was, I, saw, I actually did see this question come through about futures trading. Right now we are expanding the capabilities on the back end and that's actually a large component to this uh, project that we're working on right now. Um, we are right now dipping our toe in the water for options data. Um, we have futures data, we don't have futures trading. Um, we may very well in the near future have futures trading. Um, this is involved with some of the work that we're doing with TDA and that back end stuff that I was talking about earlier. Um, so that stuff is coming down, but in addition to that, um, you know, we're working on some level two, um, some time and sales views, um, and let's see, a couple other things. I'm, I have a bunch of items on this list. I'm really just running through this list. Um, table expansion. One of the things that you guys had asked for in the past. Um, no, I'm sorry. I'm actually I'm trying to tie this into a point that I made earlier, and I don't think I quite finished the point. But the point is uh, debugging your strategies, or simply getting a data export of the you know calculations that the system is capable of doing. We plan on expanding this table so that you can assign to every column, or you can add columns that are tied with Wizard Lab scans. So, for example, if you want, um, let's say, like a 20 period moving average. Uh, what we're working on is being able to tie one of these scans back into the quotes table, right? So you'll be able to kind of you know right-click on here and say add a scan, and it'll present the output of that scan calculated through you know the client side modular instance of the study engine, and you'll be able to have a column here with anything that you you want to see in it. This will kind of allow you to debug um, optics and strategies as they happen in real time, um, but this is actually one of the major features that we're working on in this release. Okay, and then there's a bunch of other things that really don't need mentioning at this point. Um, some other questions I have here. Um, yes, exactly. I don't know if I answered this. Um, reference the... Uh, oops, sorry, I'm scrolling here on my chat window. Um, Cosmo is asking about reference in Wizard Lab to the open price and the time of the trade. Um, yeah, those are the portfolio relative rules. That's item C on this project that we're working on right now. So again, I apologize it took us you know, um, so long to get around to it. Um, this project should address that. That should be available in this project. Um, let's see here. I have some other questions here. Let's see. Folders in my rules? Exactly. Uh, we started working on this. Um, this may not be uh, delivered in this project. It might be in the next one. Um, the my rules we're gonna change this around and we actually did start working on this so that you could have folders and nesting and uh, we're considering kind of tying it in more closely with your file system um, there's some trade-offs to this right the rules when they're saved are stored on the server and when they're on the server you can access those rules from any system and you don't have to worry about you know putting them on your key drive and things like that um, we're actually considering the idea of just making them just managed as files um, you know, this is based on, you know, prior art where you see everybody else, um, you know, just managing saved files for the rules and things like that. Um, you're probably going to see this um, in the next couple of builds. I, I think right now we're leaning towards it. We haven't committed to it, but we're probably going to le uh, lean towards that. Let's see. Numbers higher than 200 max. Actually, that's that's a really here's here's the question. Um, periods greater than 200 when you're doing kind of like moving average calculations. Um, this is something that we are initiating. Let me explain. Let's say I have um, well, I've got EMA over here, right? EMA, I can change the periods and I can go from say 14 and I can spin up. We have a cap on this, and the cap is 200. So if I try to go to 300, it's not going to let me. It lets me go up to 200, and I can't go past 200. Um, the reason why this is the case is because of the arbitrary intervals. Um, and here's my point. 
usually we're not interested in periods of 197 intervals. Like usually we're interested in a 200 period average, but we really don't care about 197 period average. Um, we may be able to offer larger intervals, you know, say going back to 300 and 600, if we do a procedure called quantization. Now quantization, that's a procedure where um, basically the idea goes back to anytime you take something that's analog and you make it discrete, right? So for example, if you take um, the dial on your ham radio and if you change that over into like a digital FM radio, what you did was you took the whole spectrum and you, you diced it up into numbers, right? Um, anyway, my point on this, my point is that one thing we may be able to do is trade off intervals. So for example, instead of allowing an arbitrary, you know, 197 intervals, allow you to go up to, you know, maybe say, you know, 100 and quantize after that. So like maybe go up to 100 and then increments of five thereafter. That would actually allow us um, to go, you know, higher than 200 because we could trade off um, in the engine. So for example, you know, maybe at 200, maybe we could offer 210, 220, etc. Um, that's something that, you know, we're, we're initiating right now. So that's actually a very good question. But, you know, um, keep asking us, you know, I mean, w the concept's not lost on us, so we're definitely thinking about that. And some other questions in here. Um, looks like, you know, this, this goes back to this installer, Java 1.6 recognition. Any fix for the Java 1.6 recognition issue? Um, that's a great question, actually, because this is another thing related to this installer that we're having uh, some issues with. Um, anytime you get problems with the installer, please send those in to prodigio at thinkorswim.com. Um, this is going to kind of, you know, help them uh, get this issue resolved as soon as possible. Um, but again, yeah, I appreciate every all the emails being sent in. Will TOS license studies become available on the Prodigio side? Um, my understanding is that we do have access to all of those license studies. Um, not in the immediate projects, but in the projects that we're working on afterwards. Um, we're trying to do this complete reconciliation where even the ones that are licensed, we're trying to um, incorporate those into the wizard lab. Uh, but that's probably going to happen after the next two projects. So that's coming and um, if you have a specific study that you want to see implemented in Prodigio, you can send in the request and that's what that's going to do is that's going to make it to our study request list. And in the background we have guys working on Prodigio studies and you may see these come in from time to time but um, we release a certain number of studies um, every now and then, kind of as a background task. So if you request the study, there's a fair chance that you know, you're going to see this before any major releases or major changes. We have something in the system called a study delivery system. And that lets us work on studies, build them, and deploy them without actually um, you know, having to do a release. So that's actually something pretty cool. So please send that in as a, as a feature request to prodigio at thinkorswim.com so it gets archived and uh, it reaches the right people working on that. Okay, um, so there's there's some good chat. Um, I want to make sure that I talk about the future direction, right? So I'm going to wrap up today's chat. You know, and today was very today was a very uh, plain vanilla chat where we just kind of talking about the system and you know what we're planning on doing with it, etc. Um, I want to talk about the uh, direction after these next two projects. So to sum up, uh, right now we are working on a project which features um, quick scanning, fundamental data, portfolio relative rules, and dynamic symbol lists. Those are kind of the main focuses in the current project to kind of be more feature complete in terms of some of the things that you know are expected from us. After that, we're going to work on um, you know some issues related to it's called portfolio order entry order book and reports. And what this does is this is actually going to build back end support. Everybody keeps asking for futures, and I hear you. <laughs> I, I, I can't wait to be able to offer futures. Um, we are targeting this. You know, we, uh, we, we weren't lying when we said we were doing it. <laughs> but uh, we are targeting this, and that's why this is our next uh, target project. 
after that we're going to work on um, some of the enhancements that I had brought up in the past before, such as the improved charting, right, and the ability to tie Wizard Lab into charting in a purely drag and drop fashion. This is something that I am, you know, personally really excited about. Um, but again, th this is uh, we recognize, you know, a lot of the needs uh, in order to do uh, operations based on trading futures and uh, you know these symbol lists and expanding some of the risk parameters and capabilities of the system. So, you know, those have become our number one priorities, and uh, that's why those are our next projects. But chart, uh, remodeling project comes after that, and then after that, we're going to work on some wizard lab enhancements, improvements, and even embellishments. So this is some cool stuff, um, just to give you an idea of where we're headed. And uh, other than that, um, I think I'm going to wrap up today's chat, you know, by saying, um, if this is your first time, you know, checking out the Prodigio system, um, we're probably going to focus next week more on the actual building of Prodigio, the mechanics of the system. So next week, um, I have to get a, a, a lesson title for next week, um, but it's either going to be one of the uh, the intro chats or one of the strategy building advanced chats. Um, but with that said, um, you know, I wish everybody a great day. I'm gonna I'm gonna sign off uh, for today. But um, you know, hope you enjoyed the discussion. Um, you know, I was happy to be able to answer some of these questions. And again, any other questions you can send in either here on the chat, and hopefully one of the guys will, um, you know, will pick this up. Um, Tick-based processing—that's something that we're heading towards. Yes, we're heading towards this. Um, we don't have it in uh, available right now, but uh, we're working towards that. And that's that's going to probably come after. Um, Okay, with that said, my name is Brian Wagner. I'm the Chief Architect of Prodigio RTS. And uh, again, I invite you all to join us each week at 12 o'clock Eastern, 11 o'clock Central, where we'll have chats about Prodigio and the system. And uh, with that said, um, I'm going to sign off and wish you all a great trading day, everybody. All right, thanks. Take care and see you next week.